Hey there, in this video we'll be learning about particles. Here's a preview of what we'll be making in this video. Now I have this empty project here. To start, I'm gonna create a new object called O Game Controller. So if you have a game controller present in your game rooms, you can use that for your in-game particles. I'm gonna drop this into the room and then I'll go back to the object. Here I'm gonna add the create event. I'm gonna create a particle system here in this variable. For that, I'm gonna use this function. Now a particle system is where your particles are created. So you need a particle system to create any particles. So this will be our particle system for this video. Now you can also specify a depth for your particle system. So all the particles in that system will be drawn at that depth. So to set a depth value, I'm gonna use this function. I can pass in the particle system and then the depth value. So I'm gonna set this to minus 100. Now you can also use part system create layer to create a particle system directly on a layer in the room. Now when the game room ends and the game controller is gone, we want the particle system to be destroyed. For that, we're gonna use the cleanup event. Here, I'll simply destroy the particle system using this function. Now to actually create particles in this particle system, we need a particle type. So for each different type of particle, you need a particle type. I like to create my particle types in a script that runs when the game starts. So I'll create a new script for that and I'll name it init. Now in the script, we wanna make sure that it runs when the game starts. So for that, I'll add this. We are running the gml pragma function to give a command to the compiler. That command is global. Using the global command, we can run some code when the game starts. So that code is in this string. In the code, we are simply running the init script. So this way, this script will run when the game starts. Now if you're in the future and you have Game Maker Studio 2.3 or above, then you don't need to do this. Anything you put in the script will automatically run when the game starts. Just don't put it in a function. Now for creating our particle types, I'm gonna create a new region. Then I'm gonna end it with this. So now we have a region that we can close and open. Now I'm gonna create a basic particle. The variable for this particle type will be global PT basic. To create the particle type, I can use this function. So this way we have now created an empty particle type. But instead of storing it in a global variable directly, I'm gonna use a local variable first. And then we can simply assign the particle type from the local variable to the global variable. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because this is easier to type than this. So when setting up the particle type, we can simply use this variable instead of this. So for the particle type properties, we are now gonna learn about the shape and life. The shape is simply what the particle will look like. So to set the shape, we can use this function. First we pass in the particle type, which is in the local variable. And then we specify the shape. So these are under the PT shape constants. If you type that, you can see all of the shapes in the list. I'm gonna select the disk one and then I'll middle click on the constant. This will open the manual where we can see all the shapes. So this is the one we have selected. Now I'll close the manual and back in the script, I'll finish the function call. So this way we have specified what the particle looks like. And now we're gonna give it a life. The life of a particle is how long it stays on screen. So to set the life, we use this function. In the arguments, we have a minimum value and a maximum value. So the actual life of the particle will be random between these two values. So I'll set the minimum to 20 steps and the maximum to 40 steps. So now the actual life of the particle will be random between 20 steps and 40 steps. Now we're gonna create this particle type in our particle system. So in the game controller object, I'll add the step event. I wanna create the particle wherever I press the mouse. So I'll add this. This checks if the mouse button is held down. In that case, we are creating our particle type. So this is the function we use for that. 
Here we pass in the particle system that we are using. Then we have the position where the particle will be created. So that will simply be the mouse X and Y. The particle will be created wherever the mouse is. Then we have the particle type that will be created. So we pass in the global PT basic particle. Then finally we have the count. This is how many particles will be created with this function call. We only need one per step. So this should create our particle. I'll go in the game and when I click a particle will be created. It has a disk shape and its life is random between 20 and 40 steps. Now we can start animating our particle. So we are gonna learn about the alpha, color and size properties. For the alpha I'm gonna write this. Now in the list you can see we have three functions. We have alpha1, alpha2 and alpha3. With alpha1 we can simply set an alpha value for the particle. Now alpha2 is what allows you to animate the alpha. You pass in two alpha values, one for the beginning and one for the ending. Then with alpha3 we have the alpha value in the beginning, then in the middle and then in the end. I'm gonna use the alpha2 function and pass in the particle type. Now for the first alpha value I'll enter 1 and then for the second alpha value I'll enter 0. So the alpha will be 1 in the beginning and by the end it'll be 0. So now in the game you can see the effect. The particles now have a fading effect. I'm now gonna show you what happens when you use the alpha3 function. So for the alpha values in this function, we have start, middle and end. I'm gonna set the start value to 0. So now the alpha for this particle will go from 0 to 1 to 0. So I'll run the game now and create a particle and you'll see the alpha go from 0 to 1 and then back to 0. So we have different ways of animating the alpha of a particle. Now in the script, I'm gonna change the alpha back to the alpha2 function and the values will again be 1 and 0. Now we'll be looking into changing the color of a particle. So I'll type this for the color. And here you can see that we have color1, color2 and color3 functions just like we did for the alpha. So like the alpha functions, they allow you to animate the color values. So I'll use the color2 function. For the starting color, I'll enter C red and for the ending color, I'll enter C white. I think you know what's gonna happen now. The particles will start red and then they'll fade into white. So this makes a really nice particle effect because the color is not constant. Now we can also change and animate the size of the particle. For that we can use the part type size function. Now in the arguments we have size minimum, size maximum, size increase and size wiggle. Now the starting size of a particle will be random between the minimum and the maximum. So I'll enter 0.7 for the minimum and 1 for the maximum. The size of the particle will be random between 0.7 and 1. And 1 is the full size of the particle. Now the next argument is the increase value. Any value you enter here will be added to the size of the particle every step. So you can make the particle grow or even shrink by entering a negative value. For now I'll leave this at 0. The next argument now is size wiggle. Any value entered here will be randomly added or subtracted from the size. This way you can make your animation a little erratic. I'll leave this at 0 and now I'll run the game. Now when I create the particles, some will be smaller than others. So the size of each particle is random between 0.7 and 1. Now we're gonna make our particle grow. So for the size range in this function, I'll enter 0.1 and 0.2. So the particle will start small. Then in the increase argument, I'll enter 0.025. So this will be added to the size of the particle every step. I'll go into the game now and the particles now grow from a smaller size. So this way you can animate the size of a particle. Now we'll be learning about the speed, direction and gravity properties. You can use these properties to make the particles move in any direction. First we're gonna set the speed. So for that we use this function. In the arguments, we have a minimum speed, a maximum speed, an increase value and a wiggle value. 
So these are the same arguments we had in the size function. I'm gonna set the minimum to 2 and the maximum to 4. So the actual speed of the particle will be random between 2 and 4. And then I'll set the increase and the wiggle to 0. So in the game, the particles are now moving because we set the speed. But they are moving only to the right. This is because the default direction is 0 and 0 points to the right. So we are now gonna set a direction for the particle. For that, we use this function. Now the arguments here are the same as before. So we have minimum, maximum, increase and wiggle. Now I wanna make the particles go up, so the direction value for that is 90. But I also want there to be some variation in the direction. So to achieve that, I'll enter 80 in the minimum and 100 in the maximum. Then for the increase and the wiggle, I'll enter 0. So the direction can be anywhere between 80 and 100. And that's what we get in the game. The particles are now going up. Now I'm gonna modify the direction. I'll set the minimum to 0 and the maximum to 360. This way the particle can go in any direction. And that's what happens in the game. The particles are just moving in random directions. Now we'll be adding gravity to the particle. For adding gravity, we use this function. In the argument, we simply have the speed of the gravity and the direction. For the speed, I'll enter 0 0.2 and for the direction, I'll enter 270. 270 points downwards. And now our particles have gravity. You can feel that they have a weight now. Now we'll be learning about the sprite and orientation properties. I've imported this animation that I want to use for my particles. Currently we are defining our particles appearance with a built-in shape. So I'm gonna remove the shape function. Then I'll also remove the alpha, color and size. And then finally I'll remove the gravity. So now this is a simple particle that has a life, a speed and a direction. Now instead of a shape, I'm gonna use a sprite for this particle. So up here, I'm gonna use this function. With this, we can simply assign a sprite to the particle. I'm gonna bring up the arguments now. And the next argument we have here is the sprite. So for that, I'll simply pass in as fireball. Now the next argument tells whether the sprite should be animated or not. I don't want it to animate for now, so I'll set it to false. Now the next argument is stretch. If you set this to true, then the animation of the sprite will be stretched to fit the life of the particle. But we are not animating the sprite, so I'll just set this to false. Now the last argument here is random. If this is true, then the starting sub-image of the sprite animation will be random. I'm gonna set this to false. Now I'll go into the game, and you can see that our particle is a fireball. But you can see that the particle doesn't rotate at all. So this is where the orientation comes in. The orientation is simply the image angle of a particle. So for the orientation, we have this function. If you look at the arguments, we again have minimum, maximum, increase and wiggle. I'm gonna set all of these to zero because I don't wanna make the orientation something specific or something random. I just want it to be relative to the direction. So for that, I can use this last argument. I'll set it to true. This way, the image angle of a particle will be relative to its direction. If I run the game now, the particles will face where they are moving. Now the particles start big, so it looks odd in the beginning. So to the particle, I'm gonna add the size property. The range for the size will be 0 and 0. And it'll increase by 0 0.04. So this way the particle should grow from nothing. And when I go into the game, that's what happens. Now we'll be animating the sprite. In the sprite function, we have this argument for animation. If I set this to true, then the sprite will animate. Now I'll go into the game and create some particles. And they don't exactly look good. This is happening simply because the animation doesn't fit the life of the particle. In our case, the animation is actually shorter than the particle's life. So to make it fit, we can use the stretch argument. So I'll set this to true and then run the game again. And now the animation plays fine. Now we'll be learning about step particles. 
This is how you make one particle type create another particle type. First, for our basic particle, I'm gonna remove the sprite function. I'm gonna give it a shape, and the shape for this particle will be the disk shape. Now I'll also set the scale of this particle with this function. Now this function is different from the size function. This allows you to animate the overall size of the particle. But the scale function is not for animation. It simply allows you to set the x scale and the y scale of the particle. So I'll set both arguments to 0 0.3. Now you can use the scale with the size without any problems, but I'm gonna remove the size for this particle. So in the game, the particles now look like this. We are gonna give this particle a trail which will look like this. So now at the bottom of the region, I'm gonna add this. Here we are creating a new particle type. So we are using the same local variable to store the ID of the new particle type. We are giving it a shape and that shape is circle. And here's what that shape looks like. Then we are giving it a life and that can be between 40 and 50 steps. And then we are giving it a size property. The starting size will be 0 0.4. And each step, this will be added to the size. Since it is a negative value, the particle will shrink. Now we store that particle type in global PT trail. Now we want the basic particle to create this trail particle every step. So for that we use this function. Here we pass in the base particle that we are modifying, so that's global PT basic. Then this is how many particles will be created every step, so I've set that to 1. And this is the particle type that will be created. So we are creating the trail particle once per step on the basic particle. So I'll go into the game and now our basic particle has a trail. Now I'll go back to the trail particle to the size function here. I'm gonna set the last argument which is the wiggle value to 0.05. This will be randomly added or subtracted from the size every step. If you go into the game now, the trail looks much better, especially compared to before. Now we are gonna learn about death particles. Kind of a dark name, but they are very useful. When a particle dies, we can have it create another particle. So like an explosion or something. So we are gonna do exactly that, and for that at the end of the region, I'm gonna add this. Here we are creating a new particle type which will appear when the basic particle dies. For this particle, the shape is set to flare. So here's what that looks like. Then the life is set to be between 30 and 40. Now for the size, I've set the minimum and the maximum to 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. Then it's also gonna grow by 0 0.08 every step. Now for the alpha, I'm using the alpha3 function. So the alpha for this particle will go from 0 0.8 to 1 and then to 0. Now I save that particle in global PT death explosion. And then we set it as the death particle for the global PT basic particle. So when this particle dies, this particle will be created. And of course, this is the count of how many particles will be created. So now when the basic particle dies, an explosion particle will be created. Now to make the explosion look better, we can enable additive blending. This way the color values of the particle will be directly added to the background to make it look brighter. So for that we can use this function. By simply setting it to true, we can enable additive blending for the particle. So now the explosions look much better, especially if you compare them to the previous ones. Now with step particles and death particles, you saw how we can make particles create their own particles and this can be used for some nice effects. If you want to know how to create a specific particle effect, drop it down in the comments. If I have enough suggestions, I may do a video on that. For now, you can check out my other videos. To catch my future ones, make sure to subscribe here and I'll see you in the next one.